Let's flip to the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. King James Version. Proverbs 23 verse 7. And look at what it says. For as he thinketh in his heart. Meaning as you are thinking right now. Whatever you are thinking right now. Are you thinking that you are poor? Are you thinking that you are defeated? Are you thinking that you have been downcasted? Are you thinking that you have no more life? He says, for as he thinketh in his heart. As you are thinking, I gave you a few moments to just pause and think. If you are thinking that you are low. If you are thinking that you have been defeated. If you are thinking that you are depressed. If you are thinking that you can't make it anymore in life. What are you thinking right now? Because whatever you are thinking right now makes who you are. The Bible says, for as he thinketh, you can put your name in there as Pastor James thinketh. Whatever your name may be, so you are. If you think that you are rich, so you are. If you think that you are going to make it, so you are. If you think you're going to be on top, so you are. If you think you are more than a conqueror, so you are. If you think that you are victorious, so you are. If you think that you are going to win this battle, so you are. If you think that you are a winner, so you are. If you think that you have conquered, so you are. As you're thinking right now, so you are. Take your seat in his presence. The title of my message this morning is Think Right. Turn to somebody tell him, Think Right. Say, Think Right. I've come to realize that one of the biggest problems we have in life is the way we think. Your thinking makes almost everything about who you are and what you do you woke up this morning by the grace and the mercies of God and the first thought was something either to get dressed jump in the shower or breakfast or something man is always thinking that is how God has designed us to be. Your brain or your mind is made as the computer. There's something we call processing. Now processing means that something that has the ability to process different things. In the computer you have so many different areas or hard drives or hardwares. They all do different things. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you think makes you who you are. You are always thinking of something. You are always thinking to become something. You are always thinking to achieve something. You are always thinking to overcome something. You are always thinking, but the enemy also knows that your thinking will either work for you or work against you. And the enemy knows how to mess with your thinking. Oh my God. The enemy knows how to corrupt your thinking. Can I preach to you? The enemy knows how to manipulate your thinking. Just like the computer... If the computer is infected with a virus, it messes the processing. If your thinking is messed up with the virus, it messes your thinking. It messes your ability to reason well. Sometimes the enemy knows how to plant seeds to mess with your thinking. Make you feel defeated. 
when Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the enemy was the first person that showed up his head to mess with his thinking ability, to mess with his understanding. Because he knows that Jesus was hungry at that time after fasting for so long. And he came to tempt him. See, the enemy will always pose at you and to come to your mind. That's why we have many people who have committed suicide because their thinking was manipulated. That's why people feel low and feel like I'm not worth living anymore because their thinking was manipulated. Can I talk to you this morning? You see... This is church, but I want to share something with you that will help you grow even in your walk with God and even in your life out there. Because if you're able to defeat the mind and conquer the voice of the enemy coming to your thinking, and the enemy knows how to use things and people and whatsoever he can use to mess your thinking. I was counseling with a young woman, a beautiful young woman, and she said to me, I don't feel good about myself thinking. And I said, why don't you feel good about yourself? She said, because I'm not beautiful. I said, why do you say that? She said, because my partner or my husband or whoever told me that. Messed up, manipulated her mind to see herself worthless. And see herself no good. And I told her, I said, the Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made everything God has made and designed is good that enemy that comes to manipulate your thinking faculty need to be cleaned out from your spiritual hard drive because until you put another type of thing that can eradicate that virus your thinking will be corrupted I've come to talk to you this morning to change the way you think it's time for you to start thinking high and not low of yourself it's time for you to start thinking up and not down of yourself it's time to start to you to thinking I can make it. I'm not going to be defeated. No matter the battle I go through, it's time for you to start thinking who God says you are. Somebody say thinking. Am I talking to somebody here? Thinking. Versus what God is saying versus what the enemy is saying. Thinking. The computer has what we call an antivirus. <laughs> the computer has something we call an antivirus. An antivirus means something that comes to overtake the virus and cleans up the effect that is messing up the hard drive or corrupting the hard drive. That's why some of you need to find you a person or a people or a place that can be an antivirus to the way you think though they may talk down on you but you want to connect with somebody who say I don't see what they are saying concerning you what I see is different what I see is somebody different I see potential in you I see somebody great in you not somebody bringing you down you need an antivirus person who can clean up the way you think somebody say thinking a man is made by what he thinks I was talking to a young man yesterday and he said to me pastor my goal is to be in the NBA and I see him getting there I say I'm going to pray for you but when you get there Remember me. In thy kingdom of money. Remember me. Because I've prayed for a lot of people who become millionaires. At the time they really needed it. And they forgot about pastors. I, I, think, I don't think that's fair. You know, I do the spiritual warfare to break every wall. And then you get there, you be like, pastor, you know, I'm so busy now. But, uh, you know, Amen. And I love the way he said, he said, Pastor, I see myself in the NBA. He said, I may not be there right now. While I'm shooting 
basketball behind my house at the court but I'm seeing myself shooting right there at the start. Some of you need to start seeing yourself driving that car. Some of you need to see yourself in that big house in that neighborhood. Some of you need to see yourself with that business. Some of you need to see something great in your life. Not for now. You need to see your head change your thinking. What you are seeing now it's not who I am. What I have now is not all I got to have now. Because what I have is still I have because I'm thinking. I'm still in the process. Just like the computer is processing. My turn has not come yet. When my turn comes, I'm going to get there. By the time I get there, I fought every virus that is holding me back for me to get to where I'm going. Because my thinking has not been corrupted. Can I talk to you? Touch your neighbor, tell him, change your thinking. Change your thinking. It is, it is, it is said that humans have more than 6,000 thoughts per day. 6,000 thoughts per day. That's what the psychologist says. You are constantly processing. But I can guarantee you that in that 6,000 process per day, we have 24 hours in a day. I can guarantee you that in that 6,000 thoughts, you have more negative thoughts than positive. Uh, Pastor, I'm defeated. How now I'm going to pay this bill? How now I'm going to do this? You have more complaint. You have more weakness than you have strength. That's why I don't hang around negative people. Because they're corrupting my thinking. They're going to corrupt my hard drive. How do I, if you're not helping to push me up. Yeah, if you're not helping to lift me up. If you're not helping to encourage me. If you're not helping to pray with me. If you're not helping to stand with me. It means something is wrong with my relationship with you. Because I need to think right. I need to feed my focus. I need to be consistent with where I'm going. Because I know what God says. He says as a man thinks in his heart. You are a product of your thinking. You are a product of your thinking. The business may have started slow, but wait a minute, we're going to expand because I see it. I'm thinking big. We may be a small church right now, but you see the sign downstairs? I'm thinking big, y'all. We may be few of us here, but baby, wait a minute, time is coming. There ain't going to be no parking space. There ain't going to be space. That's what I'm thinking right now. And some of you, I see leaders in here. That's what I'm thinking right now. You can get to a place where you change your thinking change your thinking the bible says it's not the beginning of a thing that matters but the end wait till i get to my end wait till i get to my end you may have been driving a new car oh wait until 2024 comes in wait until 2023 comes in wait until 2025 come in your car is going to be outdated because i'm still thinking future i'm thinking something more better because when god get ready to bless you he won't give you the old he will give you the new See, people can brag about everything, but God brags about the future. They may have driven, you know, I remember when I used to drive a car that some of you know we have a name for. How many of you remember the name of my car? Ever Faithful. Ever faithful. Because the car smoked like my grandmother's kitchen back in the country. It smoked. When I'm driving that car, and anytime I tell mama, please, let's lay hands first. Because we got to lay hand and pray for the car to start. Because the car won't start until you hit the battery head. You're not going to really not. You, you, you better start this morning, and you better don't stop when I'm driving you on the highway. And you better don't smoke in the name. I rebuke you stopping on the way right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that car into motion. I'm telling you a real life story. We gave the car a name ever faithful. 
Because whenever we're driving it, it takes us to point A to point B. It was a 1989 or 1990, something, 1991. Nissan Maxima. It was burgundy in color. I would never forget it. I bought it for $500. <sighs> but at that time, I've always dreamt of something better. Some of my friends were driving the latest car in that time. And I look at them, I'm like, oh my God. Huh. And the enemy will come to my mind and say, when will you ever drive? You will never drive a car like that. You're going to be driving this for the rest of your life. I said, the devil, you are a liar. Wait until when my time gets to the point where God shows up for me. <laughs> because I'm still in the process. <laughs> when your time comes, <laughs> nothing is going to change the mind of God. It doesn't matter what anybody says concerning you. <laughs> when your season for blessing has come, nobody will change the mind of God concerning your blessing. <laughs> when your time has come, nobody's going to deter the mind of God because of your thinking right. Yeah. One day... Mama and I were driving, ever faithful. And we got to a place. The car was smoking so bad, bro. So I saw a police light. Phew, phew, phew from a distance. I said, Jesus Christ. This man is going to stop us and give us a ticket. And I know he was after me. Because the smoke was a lot. And so, while we were just driving, I said, Mama, I see the police car. He's coming. I see the light. So another guy drove and radically just came you know maneuvered and was speeding on high speed so the policeman thought within himself which one do I stop the smoking car or this one that is about to kill someone so the policeman left us and went for the I say ever faithful you will never fail me <laughs> ever faithful never fails me and, and God made in a way and the policeman moved and turned and pursued this other guy to arrest him for speeding or to stop him for speeding. And I told mama, I said, now that the policeman has moved this way, let's look for the next exit <laughs> and turn around and go through the other road <laughs> because I pray that he doesn't come back looking for us. So by the time he's going to get here, we're gone. But today, the story is different. By the grace of God and by the mercies of God, Thinking right will make you walk right. Thinking right will make you walk right. Because there are people who think right but don't walk right. Because when you walk right and think right, that means you are emotion. You are emotion. You are doing something while you're thinking right. And as you're thinking right and walking right, God will bring you to a place of greatness. That's how it works. Somebody say, think right. Our brains and our minds are constantly thinking. They are constantly processing and analyzing things. Imagining things. That's how the brain is designed. Everything that happens in life, whether good or bad, was ignited by a thought. It was ignited by a thought. Why would you? I know people sometimes are really sick. And that's the voice of the enemy. Sometimes people get really sick. Why would I want to kill myself? Why would I want to take my own life? You can be the next CEO. <laughs> if you're thinking right. You can be the next Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook or whatever they call his name. Zucker, whatever. Zucker, Zucker, whatever they call his name. Amen. Excuse me, I don't pronounce that right. You can be the next T.D. Jakes. You can be the next big thing. The next superstar. Those of you who are using social media. You can be the next big thing. He said, if I was thinking the way the people were thinking. Because they were trying to discourage me. But I was walking while they were talking. <laughs> I was building while they were talking. I was focusing while they were trying to distract me. The way I think has to change for me to get to where God wants me to get to. 
I am not going to kill myself. Come talk to me if the enemy is planting any seed on your mind. I will pray that spirit out of your mind. Because the Bible says you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are going to be a lender and not a borrower. Change your thinking. Change your thinking. There's nothing wrong with church. There's nothing wrong with church. Well, I don't know about other churches, but this church, ain't nothing wrong with this church. Because we're going to encourage you. We're going to fire you up until the best come out of you. Right. Yes, 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 Sister Sherika is not here today because she's a little bit under the weather. I wish she was here. But I ain't going to lie about it. I know where God picked her from. Today she's in school. Not because of anything. But because of mama. Mama told her, baby, you got to go to school. Go to school. And she's going to graduate from that school. Because she got to learn how to step up a little bit from making just peanut. Step up. Change your thinking. Because the enemy got to tell you, no, this is the neighborhood you got to live in. Just stay here. Uh-uh, I'm not going to stay here. I'm only staying here for now, for a moment. I'm going to buy me a big old house somewhere in a gated neighborhood where before you come in, they're going to ring my phone. You're going to meet my security before you come in. Can I talk to you now? Change your thinking and see how God is going to bless you. Change your thinking and see how God is going to elevate you. Don't cut yourself with the people who are thinking low. change your thinking in school I don't have to mix up with the wrong people just because they are where they are not everybody who is in school is normal you are different you may be in some kind of neighborhood school but you can be a star in that school you can be recognized with the, from the state from that school by being different your grades are looking good. I'm telling you, by the time you finish, so many companies are going to be looking for you. So many universities are going to be looking for you. Because you are different. I don't believe in people trying to tell me, oh, oh yeah, you, you, you're going away from the brothers and, 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 and the people in the hood and all of that. Look, let me tell you what. The reason why we all staying in the hood is because, uh, amen. Amen. God is not going to bless you to be a multi-millionaire and you'll be staying in the hood. No. I'm out. I come see you guys when I see you guys. I'm going to help you up a little bit, but I'm not going to be here because I changed my thinking. Change my thinking. When God brings you to a place of greatness, he reconnects you. With different people who think alike with you. Hello? He reconnects you with different people that think alike with you. So it's important for you to realize that the way you think has so much to do with your destiny. Like the Bible says in the book we just read, you don't have to go in there. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, whatsoever things are true. Are they telling you the truth? Are you hearing the truth? It says, whatsoever things are honest. Some people are just not honest. Anything that is not honest will mess up your mind. It says, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. Good report. Look at that. Don't come here telling me all negative stuff. I don't want to hear that. Everything is always negative. I don't want to hear that. Give me good report. Because you're trying to mess up my thinking. I, I'm sorry. I love you. But if everything about you is negative, negative, baby, it's time for me to say goodbye. Because you're not helping my thinking. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to become something. If you want to go to school, start now. Change your thinking. You can be that doctor. You can be that nurse. You can be that engineer. You can be whatever God wants you to be. As long as you change your thinking. 
You can be the next CEO. You can be the next doctor. You can be the greatest surgeon. You can be the greatest author. Whatever you are doing right now, change your thinking for positive things more. You can do anything. Lakewood. The big Lakewood. How many of you know the big Lakewood? The father, the founder, may he so rest in peace. John Osteen is the father. Not Joel. Joel Osteen used to be in the camera like that. He was a camera boy like that. And that church Lakewood used to be in a garage. In a garage. That's where the church used to be. Where two or three people gathered. But the father was not thinking garage at that time. During the period of time, the spirit of the Lord came upon the father. And that place where they are now used to be a basketball called uh, something, arena. The father prophesied many years ago that God was going to give them that place. A lot of people were like, how God going to get, we're just two or three here. How's God going to give us that place? Now the father is already dead and gone after many years. And God picked him, the camera boy who is now Joel Osteen, who is pastoring the church. And said, you know what? You're not going to be a camera boy. You're going to be the one that is going to be pastoring the church. And God moved them from wherever they are. That they are not just renting the place. They bought the whole place. So God wants you to change your thinking. Because he wants to give you a bigger thing that is bigger than your dream. He wants to give you something that is bigger than what you think you can handle. <laughs> I don't know if I'm talking to you this morning. God wants to prosper you with something bigger. Bigger opportunity. Bigger job. Bigger pay. Bigger connection. That's what God wants to do with you. Change your your thinking. Change your thinking. Am I blessing somebody this morning? Everything has to do with your thinking. The way you think will ultimately build you or destroy you. There's no two ways. It's either going to build or destroy. You are a product of your thinking. Fear is a product of your thinking. Being poor, all my family members were all poor. No, no, it stops right here. It stops right here. It stops right here. They were poor, poor. They died at a certain age for some reason. Coming from home. Everybody just believed that that's how we are all supposed to be. Born poor, die poor. I said in my turn, it stops. It stops right here. They died of whatever disease, it stopped right here. They died of whatever thing, it stops right here. They died wretched, it stops right here. The fact that your parents went through what they went through doesn't mean that you have to go through the same thing because God has given you the ability to change the way you think because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Not as your mother think, not as your father think, but as you think. As you think. Don't allow anybody to put that fear in you. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, when you change your thinking, it's not your ability, it's the strength of Christ that is in you that helps you to become. You're not ready for me this morning. <laughs> your self-esteem depends on your thinking. Oh my goodness. They tell you that you have big head. There's a reason why. Because God wants you to think more than, more than them. They tell me that, oh, pastor, this is your big nose. I say, yes, because God wants me to breathe better than you. You're not going to put me down. You're not going to put me down. No matter what you say, I have something to tell you to override it. Because I don't want you to corrupt my mind. Quit going around people who tell you, you look ugly. <laughs> they say, I look ugly. Oh my God. I don't feel good about myself. Then you start to hide yourself and you start to feel low and the enemy will start. The more you think low of yourself, the more the enemy plants more seed. That's why people commit suicide. You tell them, I don't care. I'm fearfully 
and wonderfully made because you are in Christ. You look at yourself in the mirror. You flaunt that hair. You do it like this. Put on the longest lashes you can put. You know, the lashes have got some division and equation. Job, increase it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't let nobody make you feel down. They say you walk like this. Hey, look, whatever. Hello. You got a problem with that? Excuse me. <laughs> Because the way I think is different right now. Whatever you are seeing right now is the image of God. I'm thinking different. You know, I'm sorry because a lot of people look at me sometimes and they say, uh, you, especially in some community, uh, he don't act like a pastor. No, I, I don't want to. The reason is just because I don't act like they acted. Sometimes people want to remote you a certain way. So you can pretend to be who you're not. Right? But when you know who you are in Christ. And you are not displeasing God. You are pleasing God all the way. I'm not here for you to validate. <laughs> I'm not here for you to. I don't need your validation. Because my life is hid in Christ Jesus. I don't care how you want to define me. I don't care how you want to look at me. All I know is that Christ in me is the hope of all glory. Think right, somebody. The Bible says as I come to a close. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. It says, for ye are bought with a prize my God. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You are bought with a prize. There is a prize that is on you. It's not just ordinary. Look, what God paid for you to be created is much more to exist. So who are you to tell me how to live? Who are you to tell me that I'm not doing it right? That I gotta think like you are thinking especially when your thinking is so negative. I gotta think God's way because I'm bought with a prize. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it says, for I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you. They are the thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Yeah. What God is thinking about you? Are you thinking what God is thinking about you? <laughs> They're thoughts of good. They're thoughts of good. The guy who played something yesterday was telling me, said, pastor, 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 why is it that we so we Christians were so broke? I said, but are we thinking the right way? Are we doing the right thing? Yeah. Are we doing the right thing? Now, the people of the world, they took the Bible. They don't have the life of Jesus, but they have the principles of Jesus. It is one thing to be full with the life of Jesus. It's another thing to have the principles of Jesus. Because the reason why so many Christians are so broke and are not making any headway. Look, I'm going to tell you this. God has given us every ability, wisdom, and understanding. I spoke about preparation, wisdom, and understanding last week, Sunday. See, God has, there's nothing wrong in you being the next CEO of bigger companies. Nothing wrong. He didn't say that the world has to be the only ones to enjoy that. I can still be full with the life of Christ in me and own the biggest company. I can still be filled with the life of God in me and still be the next big thing happening around. Oh my goodness. And so I told him I said something. The reason is that a lot of us, we are so forgetting that I can still have a relationship with God and still be a good businessman and businesswoman. Because God has given you the ability to make money. Because guess what? The rain that falls doesn't fall only on just the just. He falls both the just and the unjust. The sunshine also shines on the just and the unjust. Whatever it is, he says, seed time and harvest. As long as the earth remaineth. That's the principle. Some of us don't know how to catch it. But you see, all these guys who don't come to church, they know how to add one plus one. That's the principle. It, it will always work for them. Though their eternity or salvation it's questionable. But you even have double grace. You have the eternal life. And you are walking the principle. 
that no matter how God is going to bless you here and at the end of it all when you finally check it home God is going to say to you welcome thou good and faithful servant because you were thinking right and the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth I was teaching the class this morning I was talking about there is never a creation without a creator there is never a creation without a, a manufacturer. Everything you see here has, didn't just exist. We didn't evolve into something from ape to human being. No, 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 no. There was somebody who thought and designed it and put it in place by the Spirit of God. And the Bible says in the book of Genesis, it went all the way. If you read that on your own, in verse 2, it says, and, and, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. Verse 3, and God said, let there be thinking light because there was darkness let there be he thought about it everything that existed even after he did all this all the way everything was good the moment you start to think the way god thinks the first person that shows up is the enemy to mess and corrupt your hard drive the right thinking can either open a door or close a door. The right thinking can either resolve a problem or create a problem. So you need to think right. The right thinking can either build up a relationship or destroy a relationship. The right thinking can either bring peace or start a war. The right thinking can either bring healing, joy or cause a pain. The right thinking can either, can either elevate you up or bring you down. And the enemy knows that everything you do in life relies on your thinking. That's why he comes against your thought. Even when you are asleep, the manipulate, he manipulates your dream in your thinking. How many of you know that? The enemy can manipulate your dreams. Because he still wants to mess up. He brings some dreams. There are some dreams God will show you. He comes at every aspect of your life. He comes in. Let's say I'm here as your pastor. I mean well for everybody here. But because the devil don't want you to listen to me. He will come to tell you in my, your dream. Your pastor wants you dead. How is that possible? That your pastor wants you there. And he'll show you that clear picture. In fact, you'll see me in the robe like this. And pastor is chasing you with a gun. Wants to kill you. And the next thing you wake up, the next day you see me, you'll be like, hey pastor, how you doing, sir? You're afraid of me. And he plants that seed. And that's how he does with many of us. He manipulates our dream. You've got to be able to know which one is of God and which one is of the enemy. Because the enemy wants to manipulate your thinking. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4. And I'll close with this. Verse 23. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it comes the issues of life. Another translation says, guard your heart. You have to protect your heart because out of it comes the issues of life. Put a security check, a security lock on your heart. What comes to your mind? What you listen to? Who you listen to? Because they've got the ability to mess up your thinking. The question I want to ask this morning is, what are you thinking about yourself? How is your thoughts process? Is it helping to build you? Is it putting fear in you? Is it putting more depression and anxiety in you? What are you thinking? Are you thinking defeated? Are you thinking that that's the end of it? I can't make it anymore. Or do you think that, you know, I can pull through no matter what? Because you got Christ on the inside of you. Are you thinking that no matter the obstacles the enemy has thrown or is throwing, I will still overcome it? What are you thinking? How is your thought right now? How do you see yourself within the next five years from now? How do you think about yourself? What are you thinking right now? Your life, your destiny, what are you thinking? Depends on the blessings. Everything that you do must be guarded by your thought. What are you thinking? Are you thinking defeated? 
Are you thinking that? Maybe I don't need to pray anymore. I don't need to serve God anymore. Are you thinking that? Is the enemy putting that in you? Or are you thinking that you, um, right now, I just need to end my life. What are you thinking? There is much more that God has in store for you as long as you keep on thinking right and keep on processing and keep on moving as long as you are fighting through that no matter the arrows that are thrown at you that you pick them up the wound becomes a scar a remembrance to where God is taking you that no matter what is shot at you that you are still focused on where God is taking you that because your destiny he paid a big price for you that I'm not going to give up right now it's not time to quit no matter what it's time to keep fighting because I know I'm going to make it to the end Lord, change my thinking. Lift up your hands, somebody. I want you to pray for this one minute. I don't know what you may have thought about or what you're thinking right now. Asking for him to help to change every negative thought. And pray that you are going to be the head and not the tail. As you confess that, that will be what is going to stay in your mind. I'm going to make it through my academic life, my school life, my ministry life. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it financially. I'm going to, I'm going to complete that business. I'm going to complete whatever God has called or put me to do. I'm going to make it. 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 Father, your people are here today. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Help us to think your way. Help us to think according to your word. Help us to think great. Help us to think right. I counsel anyone from thinking negative, from the spirit of suicide, downcast, fear, depression, I cancel anyone here from the spirit of failure. But I thank you for that spirit of boldness and of sound mind and love. Change our thinking, Lord, this morning, this first Sunday of April, so we can prosper. The Bible says that you are the head and not the tail. I baptize your people with grace this morning. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say amen if you believe God. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. Praise be to God.